Well, good morning and welcome to you all as we begin the new Christian year with uh, Advent Sunday, the first Sunday of Advent. And we're following a particular theme through Advent and this Christmas tide, uh, which is listen to your longing. And uh, actually, it's meant to be the other way around. What are you waiting for with the subtext? Listen to your longing. And there is the sense we need to be reminded every year as we end it triumphantly with the reign of Christ. Uh, we go into a period where we acknowledge again the darkness we see in the world around us. Um, and the awareness that things are not yet as they should be, as has been declared uh, in Scripture. Um, and we all have within us longings for completion for full knowledge of God. Um, and of course that longing has different aspects which we'll look at each week. This week uh, we long to be alive. You'll all have your scripts, the responses in bold type, and online the responses will be on your screens as well. Let's stand. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us all join in the call to worship. We dream of a world where everyone can live fully and freely, but, but that, that is, is not, not yet, yet our, our world. world. We long to be free of the anxiety and struggle that robs us of life, and to hope with confidence that our hopes will be fulfilled, but, but that, that is, is not, not yet, yet our world. Christ has come into our world and shared our grief, our struggle, and our frail humanness. Christ, Christ is with, with us, us now, bringing, bringing the abundant, abundant life we, we seek. seek. Christ will continue to enter into our joy and sorrow, our pain and healing, until the world becomes the world of our dreams. We, we cling, cling to, to our, our hope in Christ, Christ and we, we open ourselves to the spirit, spirit of life again. again. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we join for the prayers of praise and confession. Let's reflect on the week past, gathering up all that we've not done, all those moments where we have failed to come through as true ambassadors of Christ. God, we see your life in the trees and flowers. We hear your life in the bird song. We feel your life in the wind that rustles the leaves. We you know, know you are within, within it all. all. Today we recognize that your life is also within us, that we are part of your created world. In the same way that your life is felt in the rain that quenches our land, we feel your life sustaining us during the tough times and the painful times. We thank, thank you, you for, for your sustaining, sustaining life. life. But there are days when we struggle to see you, hear you, and feel you. We, we are, are sorry, sorry for, for letting, letting these days get, get the better of us, for letting them dull our hearts. hearts. We try to cope with the chaos and the heartache by numbing ourselves to it, by pretending it doesn't and can't hurt us. The darkness drains the light of life from within us. It seeps into our lives and relationships. It leaves us feeling tired and empty. We know no, we, we can't, can't keep, keep this, this up, up, so we come, come to you. you. We open ourselves to your word of life and light. Speak to us today, today, we pray. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offenses. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. Let us say together the collect for Advent Sunday. Almighty, Almighty Father, Father, your Son, son came, came to us in humility as our Saviour, and at the last day, day he will come, come again in glory as our, our Judge. Give us grace to turn away from darkness to the light of Christ, that we will be ready to welcome him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please join me as we reflect on the Psalm of David, Psalm 25, verses 1 to 10, 
I will read the first verse, and if you can join in the second, please. In you, Lord my God, I put my trust. I trust in you. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one who hopes in you will ever be put to shame. But shame will come on those who are treacherous without cause. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me. For you, Lord, are good. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful towards those who keep the demands of his covenant. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Please stand for the Gospel reading. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of Luke, the 21st chapter, beginning at the 25th verse. Glory to Christ our Saviour. Jesus said, There will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars, on the earth, nations will be in anguish and perplexity at the roaring and the tossing of the sea. People will faint from terror, apprehensive of what is coming on the world, for the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them this parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. When they sprout tree leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is near. Even so, when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near. I tell you the truth. This generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. Be careful, or your hearts will be weighed down with dissipation, drunkenness, and the anxieties of life, and that day will close on you unexpectedly like a trap, for it will come upon all those who live on the face of the earth. Be always on your watch and pray that you may be able to escape all that is about to happen and that you will be able to stand before the Son of Man. This is the Gospel of Christ. Our heads in prayer. Lord, through the written word and the spoken word, may we now meet the living word. Amen. Amen. Spike Milligan is someone known to us, probably best for the goon show. But in addition to being a comedian, he was also a poet. And while most of his poetry is quite light-hearted and a lot of it is children's poetry, he has written a few profound poems that have strong religious overtones. I want to begin by quoting one. Very short, very simple. He says, God made night but man made darkness. I am afraid of the dark. I'm going to park that for a moment. We'll come back to it a little bit later in the sermon. 
Today is, as Mark said, Advent Sunday, and we begin a new calendar year. A new calendar year that is about expectation. Hence the title of our study, What Are You Waiting For? Well, the Bible is very clear about it, and today's readings, the ones that have been set, spell it out very clearly. If you go and look at Jeremiah 33, you will find Jeremiah prophesying the coming of the Messiah, the long-waited-for Messiah. And at the time of Jesus, Israel was waiting expectantly for the Messiah. What are you waiting for? Answer for the Jews, the Messiah. But in Jesus, so we believe the Messiah came. And in the Gospel today, we have Jesus speaking not about the fact that he has come, but that he will come again. And so in Lent, in, Lent, in Advent, we look to two sets of expectations. One, the coming of the Messiah, and the coming of the Messiah as he comes to us in the Christmas story. But we look beyond it to his coming again in glory, because that ultimately is the fulfillment of our Advent hope. This past week we have just heard of the birth of a new virus, a new strain of COVID and the world has done a spectacular knee-jerk. Much of Europe and England has immediately closed its borders to South Africa. My sister-in-law who is struggling with cancer sent a message to Susan saying the family were all coming out from England to be with us over Christmas. That's not going to happen. And for her, especially given her state of health, a huge body blow. My next door neighbour who has an Airbnb and who had rented it out for the first three months of next year in a way that covered the full costs of the property for the whole of the year, is now facing the truth that that's not going to happen. And I think for all of us, whether we are caught up at that sort of level or just at the more mundane, everyday level, the thought of going back into possibly another lockdown is just more than we can bear. We've been battered enough. We feel despondent depressed. Many of us have lost income. Many of us have had job securities and financial securities create worries for us. And so we look forward to the future with an increasing sense of despondency. And so again the question, what is it that we are waiting for? The passage in the Gospel story today follows on from those disciples speaking to Jesus as he teaches in the temple. And they talk to him about the wonder of the temple. And it was a few weeks ago that I commented on that and the significance of that temple as one of the great wonders of the world. One writer has suggested that actually what they were saying to Jesus and perhaps in the light of the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, look at the temple. Is this the moment when the Messiah is going to appear? Is this the moment we have been waiting for when God will break in and restore the world and restore our fortunes and turn all our despondency, all our despair, all our lack of hope into joy. And instead of 
Jesus giving them the answer that perhaps they hoped for, he pours water on their parade. He says to them, far from it. <coughs> Truth be told, the day will come when these stones will no longer be standing. And then he goes on and he talks of even harder things. He talks about the fact that because they follow him, they will suffer. Because as he has been telling them, although they haven't got it yet, it is necessary, he says, for the Son of Man to suffer, to die, and to rise again. Something that they just can't get. But if it's true, then, says Jesus, that will be what's going to happen for all of us. So far from just simply raining on the parade and saying, you're putting your hope in wrong things, he warns them of coming difficulties and hardships. Not a very auspicious start, one might say, to Advent hope. But it brings us back to that question, what are you hoping for? Flannery O'Connor, who is, was a great American novelist and short story writer, wrote a number of stories, all of which are deeply rooted in the faith and all of which are bizarre, harsh, unyielding, anything but, you would think, Christian writing. But her theology was very consistent because she said, my stories are about a God of grace who comes to us even though we don't want him to. And that, you see, if you study the Bible, is the truth. We might pay lip service. Oh, we, want, we long for you, Lord. Yes, we do. But we long for Jesus on our own terms. We want, long for a God who will be what we want God to be, not who God is. And so... Flannery O'Connor in her books writes and says, God comes to us like a battering ram. And until he breaks through our self-containment, our self-control, we are not open to the grace of God. Interestingly, one of the people who comes to Susan for spiritual direction sent her a note yesterday saying do you think possibly that the advent of yet another strain of COVID is God saying to us folk you are not in control and so what are we waiting for Jesus is very clear we're waiting for the breaking in of God. The breaking in of God in the person of the Messiah who will die to take away the sins of the world. And he breaks into our world like a battering ram. He does the unthinkable. He behaves as God cannot possibly behave because it is the only way to save the world from itself. God made night, but man made darkness. And like Spike Milligan, I too am afraid of the dark. Watch the news. It's one horror story after another. Stories of ever deepening darkness a self-created darkness that envelops the world and destroys and devours everything in its path. 
And if what we're waiting for is the way the world used to be so we can go back to our happy ways, perhaps God is saying to us our happy living was at the expense of others who live in poverty, who suffer that we can enjoy our lives the way we do, can be blessed at their expense. So what is it that we're waiting for? For the breaking in of the Messiah who comes to make all things new and will come again at the end of time. And that is good news. Because you see it says to us that life isn't necessarily going to be easy. Jesus says it's definitely not going to be easy and it's going to be less easy for us if we're faithful to him than if we're not. But it is good news because it is saying God has a plan that the darkness is not the end of the world. It's not the final story. God has a plan to turn darkness into light. It's significant, I think, that Christ comes to us in the darkness of night. And the scripture readings all remind us that a light has come into the world. He is, as he tells us, the light of the world. And it is to him we must look, and it is in him we must trust, and it is in him we must have confidence. The confidence that allows us to embrace difficulties, to embrace suffering, to use it as a time of growing closer to God, of growing closer to others, of reaching out to make a difference in a dark and deadened world, to bring light where at the moment there is only darkness. And so on this first Sunday in Advent, we wait with eager expectation for the Christ who will break into our lives again this Christmas bringing hope, bringing new life, bringing abundant life. And we wait with eager expectation for that day when he will return in glory and gather us all to him. Amen. Thank you, Bishop Brian, for a very challenging message as we enter into the first week of Advent. I love the parallels that you've given to us from the resurrection, the folded grave clothes, to the Christmas story. So as we draw and reflect for a time of prayer, let us center ourselves on God's word through Bishop Brian. God, you have expressed your longing for a world living by your reign of love. Thank you for making your longings known to us. Jesus, you knew you couldn't avoid the pain of death, yet you remembered the hope found in God. Thank you for showing us how to cling to life. Spirit, you have enlivened and empowered us to stay alert, to keep watch for the signs of God's reign of love among us, to prepare for the worst even as we hope for the best. Thank you for bringing us back to life. We ask for the strength to resist the temptation to numb ourselves out of the chaos and heartache of this world. May we remain open-hearted. We think of those who feel overwhelmed and do not have the capacity to stay and live fully in the face of their pain. May they feel calm and peace. We pray for the survivors of trauma that without adequate income and shelter who suffer from mental illness, those who grieve a life for a loved one that has been lost, may they experience love and acceptance. We pray for our world to become increasingly a more compassionate, welcoming and loving place. May we be brave enough to make reality today and every day. Amen. 
We now join in the lighting of the first Advent candle. The first Advent candle is lit. As we light this candle, we express longing for full and vibrant life. And we cling to our hope in the presence and life of Christ. Let's stand for the peace. As we live in the hope of the promise of the coming of Christ, we lift all the darkness of the world to you, trusting nevertheless, Lord, that you are our saviour, our hope and our joy. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace, peace be with you. you. Peace with you. Peace with you. Peace with you. We turn to our sheets. Um, I see those of us here, the printing has been shifted over for some reason. So if I if I invent some words, you'll know why. Hopefully those online have the whole text. Come, all you who are loved by God. Come to the table of the Lord. Come and eat food with no cost. Come and drink with no money to pay. We come to eat, to drink, and our hearts are glad. Yes, dear Lord, our hearts truly are glad, and we are filled with thankfulness, because in your great love, you did not abandon us in the dark and fearful places of this world. But in Jesus, you came to us to rescue us, to restore us, and to give us new life. And all who are tired and burdened, all who are frightened and unsafe, who are sick and broken, can come and find new life. Hear us, Father, through Christ your Son, our Lord, and grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. We remember the way that Jesus showed us his love. On the evening before he died, he had supper with his friends. During the meal, he took the bread, gave thanks for it, broke it, and then passed it around with these words. This, this is, is my, my body broken for you. for you. Eat this and remember me. After the meal, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks for it, and then passed it around with these words. This, this is my blood shed for you. Drink this and remember me. And now every time we eat bread like this and every time we drink wine like this, we remember Jesus and his everlasting love. And now as we kneel or be seated, as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The bread which we break. Is it not a sharing of the body of Christ? We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Now draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Those of you in your homes who have bread and wine or substitute, please uh, communicate that to one another. I heard a story this week of someone uh, churches which are not allowing the communication of the bread and wine in their homes because the priest with his holy hands are not present in their home. And I think there are times when God understands uh, our need 
to know his presence in matter which after all he created and which we by faith receive as his body and blood and so trusting that by the infilling of his spirit we go out into the world his body his blood in the world um, and so I hope you and your homes are are happy to accept that and to believe that in your communication of one another you indeed are receiving the body and blood of Christ even as we do here this morning too liturgies, slightly truncated and different form of ending for this Advent. May our eyes and hearts be opened more and more to see and receive God's life-giving Spirit. May God's life and hope be with us and be shared among us always. Amen. And as we lift up our continent in this time of turmoil, we pray God bless Africa protect our children, transform our leaders, heal our communities, restore our dignity and give us peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. So I invite you before we close the service to pause and think of one thing we can do this week that will make us feel more abundantly alive. Let's just be still and think of that for a moment. Perhaps especially in the context of what Brian had to say to us earlier. We're ending off with a, a, par a paraphrase of one of Howard Thurman's famous words. He was a, a black theologian in America. Um, who wrote some key books on the evil of racism uh, found in America and uh, Martin Luther King uh, is supposed to have carried one of his books permanently on his person wherever he was he would read it whatever gives you hope whatever brings you to life go into this week and do that for the world needs people who are fully alive. And so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name, in the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. We could just spend a moment having a look at our bulletins. A reminder that uh, Sunday night, uh, tonight, for those of you who are watching online, um, the youth carol service will take place at 5.30 in the church hall. Do come along and join us as we rediscover the wonder of Christmas, the Christmas story in a new and fresh way. And I see you're invited to bring your favorite Christmas treat, whatever that is, maybe it's a mince pie, uh, any drink uh, you, you may wish to bring, and for seating purposes, please just RSVP Nick. Remind me that next Saturday, the 4th of December at 8.30, our prayer group, crowd who have been meeting at Delta the first Sunday, Saturday of every month will be meeting here to do a prayer walk through our suburb uh, Dunkeld and Rosebank and then our own um, lessons and carols, nine lessons and carols will be the following next Sunday the 12th of December at 6pm, sorry not next Sunday, the Sunday after a traditional carol service with all the old favourites 
led by our organ and choir. Please have a look at the other notices. Uh, and we welcome you to this Advent and hope you'll join us again next week at this time. Thank you.